Today, we're going to talk through reducing the geometry in a Blender model. Specifically, we're targeting getting our poly count down enough to move our model into a game engine. In our case, we're looking at using Roblox. Some game engines can only take models below 10,000 polygons. So we're going to explore two ways of doing this, using the decimate modifier and manually targeting specific geometry to reduce. We've created an object using a circle curve and then beveling it with a bezier curve. Then we duplicated it twice. We'll leave this one alone. This will be our original. We're going to decimate this one, and then we're going to manually reduce the geometry on the other side. So let's start with the decimate modifier. So if we go into our modifiers tab and we add modifier, and we choose decimate and then we look at this ratio right now the ratio is 1.0 that's 576 faces what we'll want to do is reduce that face count so we'll start to slide that ratio down and you'll see this really start to deform and as you can see it completely collapses at some point when I'm almost to zero so what we want and I'm gonna go ahead and focus in here a little bit on this specific object is we want to reduce our poly count but still have this look like the object we're expecting. So I'm going to go, let's see, I think we can go probably about half. We'll go to about 0.48, we actually probably do 0.5 and we've reduced our face count from I think it was 548 down to 349 so that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do, and that's a, a pretty nice looking uh, object still, it still has the, a, a pretty good shape to it. I'm going to go ahead and apply this. Now, when we're reducing our geometry, we have to take into account the engine we're using, how close the object will be viewed in the game, and what the overall resolution of the game is. In our case, we're importing into Roblox, and we want a moderate amount of smoothness on the object, so where we have this is pretty good. If we applied smoothing to this, we can see, relatively speaking, what it'll look like in Roblox. So it doesn't look very different from our original. Now, the difference is we're gonna look at this in edit mode. So we're gonna tab over into edit mode. And as we can see here, the geometry is fairly uniform for where we have it, but there it's still pretty haphazard. You can see lots of, um, you can see your quads here, but you also have some, some triangles here. Um, and there, there's no real uniformity. Like you have quad, quad, and then lots of triangles, maybe another quad in there. So the, the geometry in here is kind of haphazard. Now to understand why I'm focusing on this and why Decimate isn't great for game engines, we're going to talk about how some game engines process polygons, what effect this mixed bag has on rendering speed. All engines, in the end result, process our polygons down to triangles. So we typically want to get as close to a triangle as possible without actually getting to a triangle. Now that sounds strange. Why would we want to do that? Why do we want to to go down to say a quad which is really where we want to be instead of a triangle well if we go higher or lower than a quad there will be a lot of processing on the shape to get that shape into a triangle and that ends render time so if it's going to render it down into a triangle why wouldn't we want this triangle then because some game engines will turn a triangle into three quads first so the final render is down to two triangles for each one of the three quads. So while we're actually trying to speed up our render time by getting down to a triangle, we're actually adding render time. So in general, and of course this differs upon every engine, we want to work with quads. And as you can see here, some are quads, but some are triangles. So we're going to have some, some additional render time on that object. 
Now I'm going to flip back over into object mode. And I'm going to go over to our last object, which is going to be our manual function. So we'll go into edit mode. And as you can see here, it's already quads. That's a great start. What we want to do is give our end edges here and down here some solid geometry first. If we don't do this, rendering engines and modifiers might actually deform these edges. So first, I'm going to hit 2 on my number pad to go into edge mode. And then I'm going to grab an existing edge here. Now we want to bring it down really close to the other edge. So I'm going to scroll in here and I'm going to hit GG on my keyboard, which allows me to grab and slide the edge down the vertice. And I'm just going to bring this in pretty close here. Good enough. And as you can see, there's two edges now. Great. Now that edge is totally solid. So let's do that down at the bottom here. So I will select that edge. GG. Slide it way down here. Beautiful. And when we look at the overall shape here, we can see I don't know, maybe a rhombus. I think that would give us a good general shape. And then we would have a straight slope on this end and a straight slope on that end. And I think that might be pretty close to what we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select some of these edges. So we'll, we'll start selecting these. Uh, we'll go up, we'll go up to here. And then we can select we'll say those there. Okay, and then I'm going to hit X, and I'm going to dissolve those edges. Now, we have the basic overall shape that's similar to this final untouched shape, but has seriously reduced geometry. So now, this has 384 tries, or polygons. That's pretty darn good, considering if I tab out and I move over into the second and I tab in, this one has 1,152. And if I scroll over a bit and I tab in edit mode on this one, this has 300 or 576. So as you can see, By doing this manually, getting rid of our geometry and keeping the overall shape and then adding some extra structure to our outside edges, we're actually down to 384 triangles. That's about a three time reduction in the size of this. That looks pretty good. So we'll go back into edit mode and as you can see from here, we're shaded smooth, which is basically what you're going to see in Roblox and even though this has 384 84 polygons compared to our original 1152 I think it was they look almost similar and they certainly look similar to this last one that's great but how is this going to look in Roblox let's export them and find out so I export as an OBJ and I'm going to call this reduce poly.obj. I'm going to export that. All right, now we're in Roblox and we need to get our model in here. So I'm going to click on the workspace plus and I'm going to add a mesh part. I'm going to click on the mesh part and go into its properties. Now we're going to open up the folder and we're going to grab our reduce poly here. 
Your mesh contains location data. Would you like to move it? Sure, we'll do that. And then there we go. So now, as we're looking at this from the front, we have our decimated object, our original object, and our manually reduced object. There's barely a difference. You can actually see the slope might be gone a little bit from the decimated object, but our manually reduced object looks almost identical to our original object, but with a highly reduced polygon count, meaning that this object is going to render much, much faster in the game engine. Now we can give it a different color just to make it pop a little bit. And we'll go with red. And then we can, and then we can choose not grass, we want glass so that it's shiny. And now we can see that our manually reduced object is exactly the same or nearly the same as our original object. But again, with a highly reduced polygon count. And again, if we look at our decimated object, it's slightly deformed because we don't have that solid structure that we added in our, our reduced polygon count. Not only does it not have a good solid structure, it's gonna take longer to render, and it's gonna have more polygons than are manually reduced. So we're gonna maybe zoom in a little bit more just so you can see that that looks pretty good. I think that looks pretty darn good. And there's a little bit of distortion just because of the, the angle we're looking at it at. If we go from the top here and we come away, we can see how similar those two objects on the left and center look. So the two ways that you can reduce your polygon count to reduce your render time in a game engine are to use the decimate modifier or to manually remove geometry in your object. I often prefer to remove the geometry in my object, but if you're not concerned about the geometry misshaping a bit, go ahead and use decimate. It's seriously fast and a whole lot easier. But if you still want to retain that good look of your model, then go ahead and do it manually. So that's it for our video today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from our model. Uh, if you would like, subscribe. Follow us on Twitter at CoderHouseJ and at CoderHouse. And you can also find us on Coder.House, where we often post blogs uh, about technology from Blender to coding and everything in between. Thanks a lot and have a great day.